So starting with the question 12, uh, it says um, consider a sample of ideal gas. It says he is added, answer the questions below. All right. Um, now, if you just uh, skip to this question, as I more or less did uh, with the test the student, then you might feel lost. And if you are lost here, the first thing you should do always is check out the hint. And most of the times you will see me saying this, review a section. And um, it's not because I don't think you read a textbook. I know a lot of students, especially in physics for me, actually do read a textbook. I just think it's helpful for you to know where to go back to. I don't say read the section, I say review the section, assuming you've already read it once. So in reviewing, um, you will see, oh wait, I need to read the question more carefully. Yeah, so it's talking about constant volume and constant pressure. So when you look at section 3.5, heat capacities of an ideal gas, you will see that, um, it, so before, I think, was it in section, yeah, 2.3, um, it only covered a constant volume process. Now in section 3.5, what you will see is uh, heat reminder for heat capacity for constant volume process. Um, does it tell you what it is? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. The reminder for constant volume process and something new now. This is a fact that for a constant pressure process, heat capacity is different. And you should read the paragraph above this equation for the derivation why. It comes down to the work done and the work that has to be done by the gas if it's uh, increasing in temperature while being at constant pressure, that means the volume is increasing and that increasing volume leads to, um, leads to uh, work being done by the gas. That means more energy has to be put into the gas to raise its temperature by same amount. So since I'll be using this uh, information from the textbook, let me just to copy it over. I'm going to copy it in the corner of the screen here so that I'll have it to refer to as I um, plug in the numbers. And I'm going to copy the version that doesn't use Avogadro's number. So the version that doesn't use Avogadro's number is constant volume process, uh, specific heat capacity is degree of freedom over to no, um, Boltzmann constant. And this is the heat capacity per molecule. And for constant pressure process, it'll be, um, well, since, uh, well, let me write down what they have here and then I'll simplify it. So it's a constant volume process plus KB. So I can just collect like terms and say, it's a degree of freedom over two plus one KB. So those are the two formulas that I'm gonna be using so let me go back to the screen. And now, um, um, yeah, uh, plug in the numbers. So the kind of equation you should be thinking about is the same equation that we are using for, um, for calorimetry problems, which relates the uh, heat transfer to, heat transfer, to the uh, specific capacity. So in case of ideal gas, with this expression of specific capacity, the amount of heat transfer should be the, the specific capacity, either of these two, times the number of molecules times change of temperature. So, um, and it looks like I'm gonna be given number of molecules amount of heat and be asked the temperature change. So I think I need to do a little bit of algebra to solve this for change of temperature is the amount of heat divided by specific capacity times the number of molecules. Okay. And you know, you have to read through the question carefully to kind of suss out some of the information that's given in kind of a, some semi-coded language we have. So from chapter two, uh, you should remember that if it's monotonic, that implies something about the degree of freedom, that it has three 
translational degrees of freedom. If it's diatomic, it has technically um, seven degrees of freedom, but two of those vibrational ones are frozen out. So diatomic, uh, for the purpose of this class, we have degree of freedom of five for three translational degrees and two rotational. And that's something you all just have to memorize. Um, especially the frozen out part. That's not something that we have tools to have you drive at this point. So, all right, I think I have all the numbers. So I'm just gonna calculate the numbers, plug it in, and hopefully everything works out right. Uh, where do I put this? Sorry, the Zoom annotations are super annoying, but it, um, just the way I have to deal with it. Um, let's see. Why? All right, I think hopefully this won't be too annoying. So um, if the guess is he did a constant volume, so um, so the, let me just start plugging in the numbers and I'll just choose the correct expression for either uh, constant volume or constant pressure process. So amount of heat added is 400 joules and divided by number of molecules uh, 10 to the power of 24, so 1 E24, that's one way to enter it on my calculator. Um, and still divided by the constant volume specific heat capacity, which will be 3 half Boltzmann constant. So 3 divided by 2 times uh, 1.381 times 10 to the power of minus 23. Uh, I'll probably have it remembered for next two weeks. Um, okay, uh, hit equal sign and I get 19.3. So that should be right. 19.3 Kelvin or degrees C. For this particular question, it doesn't matter either. Both are correct. Okay, uh, let me just keep going. Um, so with the constant pressure, it's the exact same number. So there's going to be a lot of tediousness here. Um, it's a little bit early, but let me break out all from alpha. I think that's going to cut out on a lot of this tedious typing. Um, that waste of your time and waste of my time, waste of this virtual class session time. <laughs> let me just bring in from alpha. And I can just, uh, 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 so, you know, Q over CN. So Q is 400 joules divided by C is going to be this. So um, three halves plus one, so five halves. Um, so five halves for a different reason than the other five halves we are gonna be talking about. So uh, five halves times, and for Boltzmann constant, I'm just gonna spell it out. Uh, Wolfram Alpha knows it, what it is. The only thing you have to be careful when you do this is all the physical constants have units attached to them, except for the unitless ones. So if you are doing that, you have to make sure you are entering units for all other numbers that have units. You, it, you have to go all in or not at all. So you just have to be careful there. Um, Boltzmann constant times the number of molecules, 10 to the power of 24. Um, yeah, so I will like, write this 1E24. There are other notations, but let me not confuse you with the uh, multiple notations. Um, so 11.6. 11.6. So you can see that on for constant pressure, if you have the same input of heat, the amount of temperature change is less because it goes uh, conceptually comes down to some of the heat energy going into doing work for expansion. Okay, it's uh, basically the same thing for diatomic. That's kind of why I typed it in here so that I can just change some of the numbers. If it's a diatomic, uh, what's gonna be changing is the degree of freedom. So for constant volume process, it'll be five half. Oh wait, that's the exact same number. Oh, so it's gonna be 11.6. So it's the same number for a different reason. <laughs> With the monatomic gas constant pressure, the extra energy was going into mechanical work being done. With the diatomic gas constant volume, the extra energy is going into rotational degrees of freedom. But either way, the final answer, this is why I do the problem set assessment so that I can see if you reach these answers, if you got it through the correct process. So constant pressure, 
So I'm here, it's five halves now because it's diatomic, plus one, so that will give me seven half. So let me make this into seven and just re-enter. That'll get me eight point, uh, can I do 8.3? So I think I can do 8.3 and I'll be fine because it's within 1%. Um, but <laughs> um, if you don't want to worry about figuring out your person errors, just keep three significant figures and you'll be fine. Um, if you want to figure out person errors, the, all the tolerances for the question of the questions are 1%. So watch out for that. All right, for monatomic gas, how much work is done by the gas uh, as, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a hint, you can look at that. And what I'm guessing the hint will point to is you um, look at, look at the change of internal energy that, also, that is associated with these changes in temperature and the, the kind of the amount by which the internal energy of the uh, constant pressure process changed less is the uh, work being done. I think that's what the hint will say. Uh, yeah, there's a shortcut. <laughs> and because, uh, yeah. And so let me uh, set up the equations for using this shortcut. So the, uh, let me erase some of these uh, annotations so they are not in the way. And so, the, so th they want me to do it for monatomic gas. So the expression I'm going to be using is um, the internal energy in the case of monatomic gas. Uh, let me say mon is the um, degree of, so three halves and KBT. That's the internal energy of, um, of a gas. So um, the monatomic, um, so here I'm really talking about change in internal energy. So the monatomic gas that was heated at constant volume had the change that's associated with this change in temperature. And so I can calculate that. And I can also calculate the change in internal energy for constant pressure, which is associated with this temperature. So, um, so both processes had, um, the two processes had a different amount of internal energy change. Let me calculate the number and write it down and uh, kind of wrap up this question from there. So, um, so yeah, I think it, Ultram, Ultram Alpha screen is 19.3. Okay, I think I have everything memorized. So, so three halves times 19.3 Kelvin. Uh, let me do this in order. Three halves times N. That's why I left this here because I need those numbers. Times N times Boltzmann constant times the temperature change. Okay, I forgot. 19.3, 19.3 Kelvin. Okay, so let me calculate that as a change of internal energy for the constant volume process. Oh, that's gonna be 400 joules. <laughs> Sorry, silly me. Um, so um, for, for this uh, constant volume process, you get delta U of 400, sorry, um, I should have remembered that it's gonna be the same number. So there was a bit of unnecessary work. Let me redo this for constant pressure, 11.6 Kelvin change. There it's gonna be actually an interesting number. So with a constant pressure process, the, um, the internal energy only changed by 240 joules, not the full 400 joules. So for constant pressure, the change of internal energy was 240 joules. And what the hint is getting at is the difference between these two are due to the work being done by gas for the constant pressure process. So that should be 160 joules uh, doing the difference in my head. So submit question and that's it.